Well, look at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, then verily or truly the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden cot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory for uh, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we uh, cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Spirit is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure of, for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings or different washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say not, of this building. Neither by the blood of goats or and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Another proof that a child of God can never ever lose their salvation. It's eternal redemption that he has gotten for us, those of us who have put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ died for each and every one of us, my friend. He died to make the full provision for your salvation and mine that we would be saved. But we're not all saved automatically. We have a personal responsibility before God. We can either receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour or reject or neglect Him. Let me remind you, if you neglect or reject the Lord Jesus Christ, it will mean hell and the lake of fire for all of eternity. God does not want you to go down to the lake of fire and brimstone. It is the lake of fire and sulfur. It's a liquid burning fire where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And so our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Christ died for our sins according to scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. With the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God? So we think of the eternality of our Lord Jesus Christ through the eternal Spirit. Yes, through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. No wonder, because he is without sin. You and I are full of sin. There is no difference, for all have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. Because of that, we're heading down the hill, and God does not want you to go down the hill. That's why we come here as gospel preachers, to bring you the message of salvation so that you can be saved. This is a message of love and forgiveness, but it's also a message of judgment for those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour. So we need to understand, for every action there is a, a, a consequence. So if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our soul will be saved. We'll be at peace with God. We'll have forgiveness for our sins. We'll have a home in heaven for all of eternity. That's what God wants for each and every one of us. But, if we do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's only the judgment to look forward to. What a bleak situation that is. What a terrible thing to look forward to. The judgment of God that will fall upon you for all of eternity. And to think that there is absolutely no need for that. God has made the way of escape through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was crucified upon the cross, can be your saviour this afternoon. Yes, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, or the New Covenant. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, or First Covenant, that is, Covenant of Law, they which uh, are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Another proof that those who are saved, those who have been born again by putting their faith in Christ, can never ever lose their salvation because it's everlasting life. It's eternal, it's an eternal inheritance set aside for all those who put their faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The testament is, of course, after men are dead. You know, just think of a testament like our will, the will that we write out, that what we're going to leave to our children or whoever, friends or family or whatever the case might be. So that when we die, those, those things can be given, whether it's money or possessions, whatever it might be, those things are left for our children or for those who... Yes, for those who are still on earth. Now, obviously my uh, amplifier's run out of kick. <laughs> Needs charging. So, a testament, or a will, is only in force, as it says here, after men are dead. Yes, after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all why the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats and with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. In other words, without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness for our sins. And that's important. We need to understand that 
the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ had to be shed upon the cross for your salvation and mine so that our sins could be washed away in that precious blood. So what, what is it really what we need to do? We need to come in repentance toward God, that is a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood upon the cross, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day.